Bob was preparing in the November of 44 to parachute into northern occupied Italy. The time of his going was changed so often. We had so many farewells and then came the big day where he went. And that was, that was it, he went. I had no idea where he was or when he was coming back, if he was coming back. Funny because it still upsets me just because I just thought of this little sailor boy away from home. Never mind me away from home. Our objective was to go in and uh, out again without being seen. Uh, I was offered the opportunity either to go to Australia or to go to, with the partisans in northern Italy. I thought that going to the partisans would keep me near my then girlfriend, now my wife. I was shut up in this <laughs> penitentiary Cheltenham Ladies College and the thought of going up to Oxford to write history essays when London was burning. I joined the Fannies as a wireless operator in an organization called SOE, which I discovered later had been formed by Winston Churchill. I was interviewed in Baker Street at the headquarters of SOE and then I uh, told I should go on a course of training uh, which was partly for fitness and partly for irregular warfare. I didn't know what on earth I was joining. They were such a secretive organisation. You know, it was an adventure. Fear was never in anybody's mind. And I was uh, told I was going on to northern Africa to Bone and with a view to joining Commander Holdsworth's unit in Monopoly. We went to Monopoly. We were taken to Monopoly, that infamous place. <laughs> I fancied the naval officers because they had a boat and they had wonderful parties aboard this ship. One time, Bob walked me home. Nothing dramatic. It grew to trusting a person and enjoying a person's company. And that's the way it went. I realised something that I think I'd probably appreciated but not uh, done anything about before, which was that there was an extraordinarily interesting story which he had completely failed to tell me or the rest of the family. But where do you start with six pieces of paper if you're going to try and write a story? We realised that that wasn't going to be sufficient to um, give the story the, um, uh, the treatment which it merited. So we set off on uh, a journey to discover what, what had been the experiences of my mother and father in this extraordinary period of, of three years? Well, after the war was really the only time I heard exactly what had happened to him. We never really talked about it because our friends had similar experiences. You know, it wasn't interesting then, was it? We were in a new period of history. The war was already being forgotten. My father was intrinsically uh, an extraordinarily modest man, not, notwithstanding his, uh, his experiences in the war and his achievements afterwards. I think there was also a, a generational culture which led to people not speaking about these things. I hope this book will shed some light on this particular aspect of special operations which took place in the later part of the war in Italy. We'd done a certain amount of research. We'd been able to find out what had happened to Bob uh, uh, up until this point where he was going off into the hinterland in Italy, doing something, but we didn't know what. And then suddenly, lo and behold, Marjorie, out of the blue, maybe nine months, a year into the research, says, oh, by the way, we've got a bunch of letters in the attic, which um, Bob, because Bob wrote to me, 
every single day. The wonderful thing about finding this cache of letters was that it really encapsulated for me the love story between Bob and Marjorie, but also setting the narrative out of this, at times, very brutal campaign, um, orchestrated and managed very adeptly by SOE, um, in which the partisans, who were at this, really were the heart of this story, um, were fighting this, this, this frontline battle against the Germans. And it was, you know, that whole encapsulating aspect of, of those letters which really um, wrapped up all of that into one narrative that for me was, uh, um, I think, the high point of the research aspect of this story. It's a great story about two people falling in love in a time of war and in a sense of, of good coming out of evil. You know, you didn't feel nervous. We were the brave generation. Is that what they called us? 